right. Bark Lord. I um I just don't see science in this way that you see it. I, I think it's not even fair. I don't, it's not one of these things that to me feels like it's just a matter of opinion. I think it's a mistaken view of science. For one, for example, this whole, well, let's talk about science versus science and technology. Because all grand use science is related to technology. But there is something separate as well. Just historically, forget if there's pure science now. It could be complicated. But just historically, and it was basically hobbyist natural philosophers looking into how nature worked. And I mean, they had lab technology developed, but it, you know, it wasn't really used um, as what we think of as technology. Um, but things like the objectification of, of, and commoditization of humans, that's slavery. That goes back to slavery. Humans did science, if anything, has helped show us that that's what happened. I mean, they originally did that and told us, well, it's because the gods came down and made the kings the kings, and you're supposed to be a commodity, your, your property. Humans are property. You start out as your own property. and Yeah. I mean, science has helped break down the, the materialization of the human as a mere product. It, it might seem worse now, but that's just because we have the concepts that make it so obvious to some of us what's really going on, how it should really be described. So... So, you know, and as far as what can science get into, yeah, science can get into anything because science gets to change, right? If science has a bad attitude now, that means it, it is inappropriate for social sciences study. It can change that attitude. And it has changed its attitude in the past. In fact, this idea um, that science is rigid and exact that I think is part of what you're reacting to in this this attitude of, of science and technology together that you're reacting to is um, you know as part of the old physics where they they thought hey everything in principle has this exact answer and there's this exact determinability of everything but science no longer thinks that science now recognizes there's a lot of indeterminable things and in fact science is kind of silent in philosophy, which is why a lot of the old philosophy of, of natural um, uh, the study of nature, physics, you know, this, this show me all the initial positions and momentums and I'll tell you the future kind of attitude. The, you know, at that time the natural philosophy was still very philosophical. They took a lot of philosophical conclusions from it, made a lot of pronouncements the scientific um, and technological rather achievements of it helped bolster that and um, uh, since then they haven't been as vocal why because well when I was taking physics at Berkeley they're all like we know we don't know anymore we know we're just describing nature and how it seems to work and how it goes and when the clock ticks what's happening next you know and philosophically you know they specifically teach themselves to keep clear of that and I think that'll clear and eventually they'll there'll be more and more scientists like um, you know like you have plenty of examples of you know with uh, well who's Feynman for example obviously is willing to talk philosophy um, but part of it will be that they're gonna learn how not to be so so determined and insistent that everything is determinable. What is and isn't determinable, one of the elements of the universe seems to be an indeterminability, not just in quantum mechanics or anything like that, but in mathematics. Um, it's, it's been discovered, it's a part of science now. Um, so it's not really fair to say there's things science can't do. You know, what about in philosophy? I mean, I think cognitive science shows that there is an empirical, absolutely uh, fits the, our definitions of, you know, scientific um, mode of study into cognition, into states of consciousness, you know. And it, the nice thing is, since it's science, wrong or right, uh, it is meant to change. You know, it's rather assumed to be wrong to some degree. The people that propose it are just hoping that it's wrong to a little degree and people can fill it in as opposed to demolish it and have to draw a whole new picture. I mean, that's 
that's a big difference for a person trying to come up with a theory that in principle uh, you know it, nobody's saying it's all certain and that people have to be in their place and etc 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 that's an old view of science um, had presented and people had taken including a lot of scientists and uh, the kind of people that were motivated to do science for a century or so but um, you know but even in that case look they were able to overcome that because science had this uh, experimental basis and this uh, skeptical epistemology by which you you had to demonstrate things through appearances and uh, th that is enough to ensure no matter how far wrong you go that you're not done yet and uh, not every step you know because of the indeterminability of nature it's not surprising if not every step is consistently absolutely in the correct direction but there are ways to ensure that statistically over a million steps that you go in the correct def you know, direction and of course then the problem becomes uh, defining which direction you you want to go in which one are you going to make the correct one what are you going for and um, if you master that i suppose you're just uh, in this higher dimensional space where you can suddenly steer through something you previously just experienced.